Dear audience, Assalamu alaikum. I am Professor Shamsid Juman, Professor of Pathology. I welcome all in today's 31st lecture on pathology. Today's topic is embolus and embolism. Today, day one of embolus and embolism. Dear audience, first come to definition of embolus and embolism. Solid, liquid or gaseous mass. transported by blood to a distant place so solid liquid or gaseous mass transported by blood to a distant place from its point of origin or from its point of entry is called embolus. So solid, liquid or gaseous mass transported by blood to a distant place from its point of origin or from its point of entry is called embolus. The process of infection is called embolism. Again, solid liquid or gaseous mass transported by blood to a distant place from its point of origin or from its point of entry and is impacted. The mass is called embolus and the process of impaction is called embolism. Dear audience, Suppose this is blood vessel. If this is a mass in blood and if this mass is originated from here or if this mass enters from outside here. Either the mass is originated here with the point of origin or if the mass enters in the blood vessel from outside from this point. After that the mass is transported by blood. If the mass is transported by blood the mass is called embolus. And if the mass is impacted here this infection is called embolism. So the mass that is transported by blood is called embolus. It will be solid liquid or gaseous mass. And if it is infected, the process of infection is called embolism. Now come to embolus. So the mass is called embolus. Now come to types of embolus. solid embolus the most common solid embolus is detached thrombus
Catodines, we know if thrombus is formed in the blood vessels, there are two types of fate. One is fate of attached thrombus and fate of detached thrombus. If the thrombus is detached, then it is transported to the blood as embolus. And it is called thromboembolus. Bone piece. Dear audience, if there is multiple fracture of bone following road traffic accident, the bone piece may enter into the blood and it may be transported by blood as solid embolus. Dead microphylia. Dear audience, you know microphylia. like this, remain within the blood. If the microphilia is dead in blood, this dead microphilaria is transported by blood as solid embolus. Cancer cell. Dear audience, you know cancer may metastasize by lymphatics, by blood vessels, etc. If cancer cell enters into the blood vessel, the cancer cell may be transported by blood as embolus, and this cancer cell may impact in a small vessel and lead to embolism. Bullet. These are the solid embolus. Now come to liquid embolus. Liquid embolus may be amniotic fluid. Liquid embolus may be fat. Dear we have to know which fat may lead to embolism or which fat may be transported by blood as liquid embolus. The audience to know medullary cavity contains bone marrow and within the bone marrow there is sinusoids. If the sinusoids within the blood with the bone marrow, if if this is sinusoid within the bone marrow, if there is road traffic accident and fracture of bone, following fracture of bone, there will be rupture of the sinusoids within the marrow cavity. If there is rupture of this sinusoid, the fat of marrow may enter here like this. So fat that comes from bone marrow in blood vessel following rupture of sinusoids of bone marrow following road traffic accident. And this fat of marrow is transported by blood as liquid embolus. Gaseous embolus. It may be air, it may be nitrogen. So these are the different types of embolus. Again, the most common embolus is the detached thrombus, that is thromboembolus, that leads to thromboembolism. Now the types of Embolism. Carodines, again we recall the mass may be solid, liquid, or gaseous that is transported by blood from its point of origin or point of entry to a distant place and is impacted. The mass is called embolus 
and the process of impaction is called embolism. So the impaction is known as embolism. Again, impaction in the blood vessel is known as embolism. Types of embolism. One is pulmonary embolism or venous embolism. Another is systemic embolism or arterial embolism. So the process of infection that is embolism may be pulmonary embolism, it is also called venous embolism, systemic embolism or arterial embolism. First come to pulmonary embolism or venous embolism. Dear audience, in pulmonary embolism, embolus is transported by venous blood. Embolus is transported by venous blood and by the venous blood embolus enters into the right atrium then right ventricle and ultimately goes to lung and within the lung the venous embolus is impacted and this is pulmonary embolism or it is venous embolism. Now come to source of pulmonary embolism. The source is vein. Vein is the source. Suppose a thrombus is formed in deep cup vein. Thrombus in deep cup vein. If this thrombus is detached, this detached thrombus is nothing but thromboembolus. And this embolus, thromboembolus, via vein enters into right atrium then from right atrium it enters into right ventricle from the right ventricle it goes to lung and in the lung this embolus that is the thrombobolus is impacted in the lung impacted so this is called pulmonary embolism and the source of the embolus is vein the rodents now come to what are the effects of pulmonary embolism if an embolus originating from the venous site via heart enters into the lung what may be the effects of such type of pulmonary embolism now come to effects of pulmonary embolism effects may be in 60 to 80 percent cases no effect. Embolus is within the lung, there is impaction within the lung but there is no effect. It is in about 
60 to 80 percent cases as there is no effect this is called silent embolism it is called silent embolism dear audience embolus is within the lung there is infection but there is no effect why no effect it is due to the embolus is very small and the embolus small embolus is lysed by fibrinolysin why no effect because smaller sized embolus undergo lysis by fibrinolysin so there is no effect in about 60 to 80% cases Vasculature with the lung, and if this is the small embolus impacted here, this embolus undergo lysis by fibrinolysis. So there is no effect. Another effect is pulmonary. If medium sized vessel with the lung is impacted, there is chance of pulmonary hemorrhage. Pulmonary infarction. There are days you know, infarct means localized area of ischemic necrosis either due to sudden arterial occlusion or due to impaired venous return. The localized area of necrosis area is called infarct. It's pulmonary hypertension. The other thing is, if multiple a small embolus within the lung, there is chance of pulmonary hypertension. Another is sudden death. It is in about it is in about 10% cases. In about 10% cases, pulmonary embolism is associated with sudden death. What are the causes of sudden death? What are the causes of sudden death in pulmonary embolism? One is impaction of saddle type embolus at bifurcation of pulmonary trunk. So, infection of saddle type of embolus and bifurcation of pulmonary trunk. Suppose this is the bifurcation of pulmonary trunk. If saddle type thrombus or there is a saddle type embolus here is impacted here, there will be sudden death sudden death. This is the bifurcation of pulmonary trunk. Another cause of sudden death in pulmonary embolism is if more than 60% pulmonary vasculature is occluded by embolus.
if more than 60 percent pulmonary vasculature is occluded by embolus that is if more than 60 percent pulmonary vasculature is occluded by multiple embolus by multiple embolus there is chance of sudden death so infection of sudden embolus at bifurcation of pulmonary trunk or if more than 60 percent pulmonary vasculature is occluded by multiple embolus there is chance of sudden death in pulmonary embolism so these are the different effects of pulmonary embolism now come to what are the factors that are associated with the effects of pulmonary embolism factors associated with effects of pulmonary embolism The factors are number of embolus. Number of embolus. If number of embolus is minimum, there is less chance of effect. If one small embolus usually no effect. Again, if multiple embolus, chance of effect. So, if one is full embolus, no effect, usually, if multiple embolus, usually there is chance of effect. what are other factors size of embolus if size is smaller there will be no effect usually no effect if size is large one, there will be effect. There will be effect. Site of infection. Site of infection. If a large embolus is impacted at the bifurcation of pulmonary trunk, there will be sudden death. So, effect also depends upon the site of infection of the embolus. Shape of embolus. If the shape of the embolus is saddle shape, if the embolus is saddle shape, it may impact at the bifurcation pulmonary trunk and may lead to sudden death. What are other factors associated with the effects of pulmonary embolism? Dual blood supply. Dual blood supply is associated with no effect or may be associated with delayed effect. Cardio respiratory status of individual. Dear audience, 
if anybody suffers from pulmonary embolism with no previous cardiac disease or pulmonary disease, the effect of pulmonary embolism may be delayed or may be less effect. But if anybody suffers from pulmonary embolism with previous cardiac disease or pulmonary disease, the effect of pulmonary embolism will be enhanced. So these are the different factors associated with effects of pulmonary embolism. Dear audience, now come to systemic embolism. Or it is arterial embolism. Dear audience, I have told you in arterial embolism or in systemic embolism, the embolus is transported by arterial blood. Embolus is transported by arterial blood. So if this is an artery, these are the branches of arteries. If within this artery, this is an embolus, if this embolus is transported with blood, it may turn into the small branch of artery and impacted here. This is called arterial embolism or systemic embolism. Now come the source of arterial or systemic embolism. Source of arterial or systemic embolism is left ventricle. Gallodines, you know if anybody suffers from myocardial infarction, there is sense of formation of mural thrombus within the left ventricle. If a thrombus is formed in the left ventricle following myocardial infarction and if this formed thrombus is retouched from the left ventricle, it will come out from the left ventricle and it is transported by arterial blood and this embolus or thrombus originating in the left ventricle coming in the arterial circulation will lead to infection and causes arterial embolism or systemic embolism. Again, the process of infection is called embolism. Now come to effect of systemic embolism. Dear audience, the effect of systemic embolism is ischemic necrosis. Ischemic necrosis distal to distal to occlusion of artery. So ischemic necrosis distal to occlusion of artery is the effect of systemic embolism. Dear audience, suppose this is heart and if anybody suffers from myocardial infarction, there may be formation of the thrombus in the cardiac chamber that is within the left ventricle and this thrombus from the left ventricle come out in the aorta, then it is transported by arterial blood, transported by arterial blood. Suppose this is the artery 
again and these are the branches of artery like this if this is the detached thrombus from the left ventricle now it is embolus it is transported by blood and it is impacted here impacted and and distal to this artery depression the tissue undergo ischemic necrosis so effect of systemic embolism is ischemic necrosis distal to occlusion dear audience i have told you what is embolus and embolism what are the effects of pulmonary embolism i have told you systemic embolism and effects of systemic embolism today up to this in the next lecture gaseous embolism and paradoxical embolism will be discussed thanks all